Ramadan is one of the most important periods in the year for Muslims throughout the world. Muslims make up nearly 2.7 million of the population in the UK. Last year in the United Kingdom, Channel 4 made the decision to broadcast the dawn call to prayer during Ramadan. The channel was criticised for this and the decision resulted in a number of viewer complaints. Its chairman David Abraham was summoned by the Commons Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee to defend the decision. The head of factual programmes for Channel 4, Ralph Lee, said, The level of Islamophobia we encountered with the fall Ramadan season was unexpected, though much of it came from communities that were either very polarised or very undiverse. This week on Islam and Life, we ask, how can Muslims work with the media to raise greater awareness of Ramadan? To answer this question, we join Professor Tariq Ramadan in Oxford. The month of Ramadan is a very important month for Muslims. We see all the dimensions and the very essence of Islam as a religion and as a way of life. Muslims fast and pray and seek to serve humanity. The Quran says, we sent you as a mercy for mankind. Muslims living in the West should show solidarity and serve humanity and use this time to show how significant common human values are to them. Despite this, we often see in Western media there is still a negative picture and perception present towards Muslims. How can the Muslim community get better coverage from the media? To shed light on this issue, Professor Tariq Ramadan is joined by television producer and journalist Naveed Akhta, who also worked on Channel 4's Ramadan season. Why do you think that the media in the West or in Britain, for example, are not covering, uh, you know, for example, the months of Ramadan in a way which is positive and showing the very essence of what Islam is? Well, uh, the media tends to reflect what they think is important in society. And up till now, Muslims themselves, particularly in the UK, made Ramadan a very private thing. I mean, my parents' generation, they bought their traditions from Pakistan. Some people bought their traditions from Morocco or from Egypt. And they tried to recreate those, but in their home. The next generation, my generation and the ones who were younger than me, are really looking to take Ramadan out into the streets, out of the mosque, into society, because their friends are asking them questions. Hmm. And as that's begun to happen, some aspects of the media are beginning to notice it and want to talk about it. But unfortunately, it's now the, actually the third most important religious festival in the UK. After, uh, just after Christmas and Easter comes Ramadan. It, it's so largely celebrated, 5% of the country will be fasting. And yet, actually, you're right. I mean, the coverage is nowhere near reflective of that. But uh, just to, to come to the point that you made, because this is very important, and sometimes the Muslims themselves don't get it, that in the media, it's a two-way process. It's not only the journalists coming and covering, it's also the way you are exposing, you are interacting, in fact, with the media. And as you said, the first generation, almost everywhere, it was the same in the States, it's the same in the UK, in France, in Europe, uh, in Australia, in Western countries. It's as if uh, uh, we think that the media should cover what we are and who we are and what we do in a positive way while we are not interacting. So what you said also, which is important, and I'm not sure that I'm seeing it you know, as positive as, as you are describing it, is just with the, you know, generations and after time, the first generation, this was isolating ourselves, experiencing Ramadan as a family uh, experience and a spiritual experience. Uh, what you see now, what you are saying is that we have a new generation of people who are ready to, uh, and still, if you look at all the Western media and even in the UK, yes, we had one or two experiences that were Positive and not so positive, but still we don't have the impression that the, the young uh, leadership in the West is understanding that they can really change the perception about Islam and Muslims just only through that month. So why? Why is it that still we are not doing enough? I think it's just a question of, like you said, joining some of those dots are not there. But also, it, it's sort of bad timing for us, even though that generation has appeared and these ideas are there now. It's come, on, it's come at the wrong time, in a time when actually we're seeing Europe turning to the right, we're seeing um, really high levels of Islamophobia. I mean, probably the worst that we've encountered ever. 
Um, so in that cloud, it's become even harder to actually make an impact. But I'm talking to you on both sides. I'm talking to you as a Muslim and as a journalist, and I hear, I'm listening to what's going on both sides. So my advice always to Muslims has been, we have to kind of do something that is an event. You can't just simply say, it's Ramadan, come and watch us. Watch what? You, you're saying you're going to not eat? That looks really boring. It, in fact, looks very painful to see you not eating, you know. So you have to make some kind of excitement out of it, whether it's, whether it's lanterns or, I mean, my wife bakes Ramadan cookies. It's, it's a new tradition. There was nothing before. But, but, but let me so, tell you, yes, but that's a very important point. Let me just tell you something about the, my own experience. 25 years ago, I was in Geneva, and we decided at the end of Ramadan to make a, a big festival. We invited uh, uh, non-Muslims and people of other faiths. They came. It was 2,500 people coming for a festival. It was great, it was an event, it was good. Still, it was at the end of Ramadan, it was not Ramadan. Now, what we have in many countries today is to cover Ramadan and not the days, not the spiritual side, is the nights of Ramadan. And sometimes it's just exactly the opposite of the spirit of Ramadan by saying, you know, there is music, there is food, there is, and, and we want to say something else, which is not, you know, we are celebrating as you are celebrating, but there is something which is another message. So some Muslims are reacting to this by saying, this is a distortion of the very essence. So how do you keep the very essence of the religious and spiritual side? While you, what you are saying is very important, entertaining and, and showing that it's not about you know being sad and being nervous because you don't eat and you don't drink and at the same time uh, uh, to, 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 to protect the spirit and to show to the people that they, they can get something out of it this balance is difficult I, I think you're right and I, I don't really profess to have the answers I mean I've, I've also struggled with that problem I mean I've made I, I, I monitor what comes on and if you watch the BBC also marks Ramadan and does something but if you go past over the past five years one was about Queen Victoria had a Muslim servant uh, nothing to do about Ramadan, but just uh, interesting story. Uh, and everyone was like, oh, Muslim footballers, uh, uh, they are in the football league. Nothing to do with Ramadan, but okay. Int so the idea becomes that let's just sort of, a bit like patting someone on the head, we just give some little small piece of uh, token gesture. But, uh, uh, and then last year we did a very large season on Channel 4 every day. And in this, I think we made an insistence that we try to at least get through to why actually people are doing this. Now, why it's so difficult is because it goes contrary to the essence of what the society is about, to have more and more and more. So you're sitting there having less and less and less, and people find it very uncomfortable. The biggest thing people find uncomfortable is to see you starving, is to see you thirsty, and it makes them really open their conscience. And to actually capture that as a television program, it's, it's not, a, it, 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 while one would probably win you a palm door at Cannes for the honesty of what you're filming, in British television it sort of makes people switch over, they, get, they become uncomfortable. So we have to put some kind of sugar coating yeah. to, to, to keep that there. So, so, so as we see, there are resistance on both sides. Uh, some are saying, you know, you are giving a too good uh, image of Islam and this is not going to work and, and especially the people who are scared are saying oh you are playing this is a, a PR exercise that you are trying to do on the other side you have Muslims saying what is it all about we are not here to sell something we are uh, the, the months of Ramadan is for us to come back to our heart and then how what would be your advice because you are in the field you know as a, a, a television producer and, 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 and you are interacting with journalists was an understanding that sometimes is very superficial and sometimes is quite deep. And you are also dealing with Muslims. How, what is your advice just to work with the media, just to do something which is change this perception? What could be the first steps? I think, uh, p personally, I think some, a, a lot of it is around uh, the, selecting people who actually are able to understand both at that same time, have a genuine sense of being European or British, have a genuine sense of being Muslim, and because those are the people who really can actually convey that. And, and again and again, often the media, and I try to avoid it, will pick, will go into the mosque, knock on the door, and see who's the first person who comes to the door, and if that's the caretaker or that's the imam, then listen and trust him. But it requires more research. I mean, I'll give you an example. We made a three-minute short program on Lalatul Qadr. Hmm. You know, it is probably the most significant day of the whole year. When you actually think about what the, what the verse says about the night of power, 
it becomes an amazing, it could be a, almost a fantastical story of magic, of time and space, of physics, of what is happening on this night. And yet, no one has ever made even a five minute film on this. Mm -hmm. And if you visit East London Mosque, as I was lucky enough to do last year, it's one of the largest mosques in London, uh, probably in Europe, in Europe. You, you will experience something, you will feel like you are in the streets of Mecca. Which for, for one, two miles in every direction, it is like day and night till four or five in the morning, the shops are open. And people but when don't, you speak like this, yeah. when you speak like this, that's, that, that could be very pleasant for the Muslims. If you talk to the, like this to a, a non-Muslim audience, you say, oh, London, East London, like Mecca, means they are being coming. invaded. They are, they, they are, <laughs> yes. So, so how? Because this is very essential. This one picture can just have a counter effect that is. Uh, uh, we have to think about this. So, so how how would you deal with this? I think that that is that again comes down to the responsibility of the producer. How you contextualize it, where the subtlety is. I mean, I think we are we, we are trying to. It's almost like trying to do a very difficult job with our hands tied behind our back. At the end of the day. Every channel who gives you an opportunity to put this material on, on, onto, the, onto their channel does have its own restrictions. It does have to listen to its audience. It does have its own board of governors it's answerable to. And so they are require, you know, require a certain level of uh, adherence. Unfortunately, I think the real answer is that we should be also leading. We have failed to produce a channel. We have failed to produce a newspaper. We have failed to produce something which is consumable by non-Muslims. And that really should be the biggest ambition that we have, because in that we can control more. I, I agree. But at the same time, our discussion is also about how do we go for mainstream British or Western media? Because if we we need to have you know means and medias and, and where we are portraying and, 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 and giving something to our fellow citizens and to the society or the Western societies. Yes. Yet now the problem is the mainstream is all these media that are talking about us very often because this is where the people are going to. To, to, to see us and, and, and this is what they are watching and the, the image is negative. And what you are saying, the producer is playing a key role here. This is something which is important. Does it mean that the producer, as you are, should be a Muslim, man and woman? Is this the point? Well, do, do we have to have more people involved in journalism? Completely. I mean, absolutely. That's, that's been said for a, a, a lot of the time. We don't, in a way that you cannot be a master of any field if you do not have experts for, within that field. Often we see people appearing uh, as spokespeople for Islam. I've met them all the time. And then I say to them, what do you watch? Oh, we don't have a TV. Hmm. You can, if, you, if you're so frightened of the actual medium, you will never understand it. But um, it, the producer, it, the, uh, having adequate skills from within the community are there. But again and again, you will see that uh, I've experienced people will often say to me, is it really important that we have a Muslim working on the team? Is it this? Is it that? I'm like, yes, it is, because these are the people who can bring the subtlety. They can bring the understanding. But more importantly, there's a word, authenticity. You know? And what we haven't had yet till this point is a sense of celebration, because all we're doing is actually defending ourselves. This has gone wrong. There are these accusations, politics, education, you know, Sharia law. The same narrative appears yes. three, four Positive times. Positive stories again and important. again. But how about celebrating something with, for no reason other than the fact that it's, we, are, we are there and, and that's something that's a part of us? But this comes to a critical question because, you know, for years I've been telling the Muslims and, and trying to convey the message, you know what, in the West you should be an added value. You should bring something to this society. And for me, the month of Ramadan is still something which is helping us to get a sense of who you are, spirituality, and at the same time, uh, 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 resisting the consumerist society. This is something which is essential here. And we have to be very cautious not to make with Ramadan what we can witness with sometimes the time of Christmas where we just, it's a time where we buy and it's gifts, uh, it's, uh, it's more cultural than spiritual. Now, the, the question is this one. When you do this and when you try to be involved, are we trying by being in the media to be accepted by our fellow citizens? I mean, I, I completely share your concerns because there is an essence which is non-commercial and there is also a pressure because we're living in a consumer society to, for people to understand it. And in fact, actually, you know, if you go around Tesco's or Marks and Spencer's, it is simply Ramadan special, you know, buy one, get one free. So the, the, we are facing these things and it, 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 there is no precedent even for us to look at 
because in many of the other uh, uh, faith uh, um, societies, they, they've also been swamped by these issues. Mm -hmm. And so to hold our own, we can't simply completely say it's a, it's a spiritual event and actually th there's no, no, no public engagement in it. And at the same time, we can't simply turn it into a cultural event where there's fireworks and singing after uh, iftar every day, you know. So it's finding this middle, middle ground. But I think media itself is this. It's the discussion of this. It's the discussion in, in a way that one watches Question Time not to already be informed, but to listen to the different, different angles from, from the right to the left. By the end of it, you know where you stand. Mm -hmm. And actually, good media allows us at least to put four different people together and say, I think it's too commercial. I think it's too cultural. I think it should be more spiritual. And in that discussion, people begin to get an understanding of where those tensions are that we as a group are, f are finding. And that helps inform their opinion on us. Yes, that, I, I agree with that. So, so if you look at you know, the situation and you know the, how the perceptions are today, if we had to start something which is a shift, in fact, an intellectual revolution within the Muslim community to be able to be involved and, as we said, interact with journalists, what would be the first message that we think that we have to bring to the journalists and at the same time to the society in the West, just to, to, to start something, to do something which is still missing, even though, as you said, there is an evolution. It's hard, to, it's hard to pinpoint it on one thing, because at the moment we, we, we seem to be swamped with you know, layers and layers of, com, uh, uh, of problems. But really is this idea that actually we are here, we are a part of this society, and I think we have to keep saying that again and again. To and to really feel it. Sure, even, and, to, yeah, and, yeah. and to live it, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, but at the same time, you know, when I look at some of the... I've been in broadcasting, British broadcasting, for 23 years. And if you look at the parallels with the Afro-Caribbean community, you know, they've got to the place where someone like Lenny Henry, who's a very prominent uh, comic, comedian, he's had a big career, he, he has stood up and demanded that, look, we are paying the license fee. We must have 10%. We must have separate budgets. You must give us this right. And this used to happen before, but then they reversed these decisions. And in that way, we are 5%. So of the 3 billion or 4 billion a year that's spent on the BBC, 5% is money that comes from Muslim pockets. Mm -hmm. So it does involve some form of political agitation. But the person who does the political agitation often then is one who's excluded from the cream mm. and, and from doing the work. So when you have a few um, talented people in there, they, they, they feel compromised. They feel like they have to stay quiet. Mm. So I think it's this kind of balance. But at the same time, we, we can't underestimate how much it's disintegrating. There is disruption coming. And sometimes, you know, I mean, there, there is a Muslim young boy who, uh, you know, a diary of a bad man, five and a half million hits. You know, he's 20 years old, he's in a, 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 making films in Slough, he has no experience, he has a small camera. And that's more than what the BBC gets. Mm. You know, so there is demand, we can see that there is demand there, we can, we can see that there is actually talent there, but why are those doors blocked? They're not just simply blocked because of what we're doing. Some of it is institutional racism and it's been long reported. The biggest danger I think that we're facing is the reversal of social mobility. You know, I am the son of, my father was illiterate. They are, you know, um, uh, landed peasants from Kashmir. I ended up working in the BBC. That will not happen. That will not happen. The doors are closing. And I think we have to be aware of the political structures that are being put to stop that. Mm -hmm. And we have to, and that, that's where I think the, the politics need to come. But if I, it's, it's a contradictory picture, because if I, I listen to you, there is something which is happening within the community, that the, the, the new generations are much more open. They understand much more, the, not only the perception, the way the people around them are, I, I, are looking at them, understanding, or some of the fears that the people have. And at the same time, within the media, it's as if there is something which is going exactly the other way which is closing, being very cautious, we have to be very... It's as if the more the Muslims understand, the more the media are closing the doors. It's, it's as if it's, it's, it's a contradictory picture. And, and at the end, many of the young people that I'm seeing, women and men are saying, it's very difficult. It becomes more and more difficult to deal. So 
we have the choice. We have our own channels or we are dealing with the mainstream channels and we are part of, of them. Now there is a strategy. There is something which is a media strategy which is missing in the Muslim presence in, and, and the, 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 the Muslim discourse in the West. If we have to go now and to use this time of Ramadan, and, and I, I really think, as, as we were saying, that it's a great opportunity. Now, uh, for example, don't you think that I would say we should not miss the spiritual message of Ramadan? We should not miss this is something that, in fact, the people around us are always thinking that we are dealing with violence, jihad, and, and women, and, and, and not with this universal message. And we are not there. It's as if we don't know how to spread spirituality within the media. Is this something that you think that we have to do? Have you seen somewhere something that we can promote? Because at the end, this is why we need the journalists. This could make, in fact, spirituality, paradoxically, it's making money. That's, that's with Sufis, for example, today we are always talking about this. How the Muslims should deal with that? How can we do that in the media today? I think this is my life's work. I mean, I've been trying to struggle because it's, we're asking for a new genre to appear in the way that there is science fiction or thrillers or murder stories. We're actually asking for the emergence of a genuine spiritual, spiritual uh, media content to emerge. And it's very difficult to capture genuine spiritual moments on something as basic as television. It is a very base uh, art form, it's considered. But actually, if you're asking for where should we look to, where could that possible example be, I would say Iranian cinema. Mm. Iranian cinema focuses on excellence. It focuses on creativity. It focuses on talent. Through that, it has layers and layers and layers of meaning to the point where it can win, you know, I mean, something like 140 uh, prizes in non-Muslim competitions. Now, when you produce something of excellence in a way that if you look at a beautiful carpet or you look at a Pakistani truck or you look at a Kashmiri shawl or you go into the Blue Mosque, I call these the icons of Islam. They are universal icons. When you walk in there, I mean, if I go to the Blue Mosque, I see Italian tourists crying because of the beauty. Now, that is what is, we, we did it with architecture, we've done it with carpets, we've done it with food, we've done it with, you know, even uh, koali music. You know, play koali music to anybody in the world and they can't help but feel something in their heart. Mm. And so in that way, we have to now understand the medium of both television, content and film. And it's beginning to happen, I think, because I think the, the desire is there on our part. We, know, we understand that it's a big prize that we can get. And people are fed up. They're fed up of 100 films that show Los Angeles is being destroyed by aliens or is being invaded by so-and-so. I mean, the same stuff is coming on again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So when someone turns up with a new message that feels fresh, I mean, it's not. It's, an, it's, a, it's a very old message, mm -hmm. but it's, it's the creativity and the talent that will do that. Mm -hmm. That's my inspiration. I'm thinking I'm waiting for that moment and I'm trying to understand what's the DNA how can I bring the right components together to, to really do that? And I think when that happens, then we will see excellence emerging. Thank you so much. I think that listening to you, it's very important because you are coming from within the field. And there are two things that you said that are critical. It's at the beginning, in fact, the coverage or the media coverage is also coming from the attitude of the Muslims and the way they are dealing. So, so to be passive and to wait for the, the, the journalists to come is not going to make it. it it's to, to be proactive and to propose something, which is something which is important. And, and, and what you said is that we are seeing now the first uh, uh, signals or signs of this evolution with the young generation. Now, what we also uh, said, that which is important, is that not only to do this to be accepted or to be or to to please the people, but there is something. This is this uh, added value, which is very important with the spiritual side. And what you were saying is that celebration is critical because what, this is what uh, is important uh, uh, for the people to see and to understand that the Muslim presence is an added value in this society. Uh, and also dealing with some of the critical questions that we have, consumerism and, 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 and uh, materialism and, and all these big questions that we have within our society. Uh, that's all we have time for. Please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the show you have seen. And this is the way to contact us. <laughs>